What's up marketers? In today's video, we're going to review some bad ads. Now I know in this channel, we normally review winning ad strategies and new hooks to test and things that you should do on your Facebook ads. But I think it's just as valuable to analyze the things that we think we could do better and why. So let's go ahead and dive in. I wanna start off with Cureology because Cureology is actually a brand that I think does performance creative very, very well. And they're always a brand that I am checking out to see what they're doing new and what they're doing next. And they're one of the few brands that nails UGC and also nails some of the more elevated creatives. But I was very confused by this note style ad. So number one, it is very hard to see what is going on. And I, I think it's cool that they decided to do a split test. So one of them has the Curology volatile, one of them doesn't. But they need to reduce down to like three bullet points and also really condense the top title text because there's just too much going on here. I cannot imagine that this is doing well. So this ad right here that they have a their version of a before and after, how it started, how it's going, that's, that's probably performing really well. And I've seen that ad format from them a ton of times. So this is obviously an iteration, but I think the note style treatment of creative works really well for green screen so that, you know, you can have someone walk you through it or if it's very limited in text, this is way too much. Honestly, it's like so much that I'm not even reading the text. All right, next up is Glossier. Now, when I was first reviewing Glossier's creative, I actually first saw this lash slick in brown and I, I thought it was actually pretty good. You know, this features point out style is a style that I know works really well on paid social. I think they could have maybe condensed down the benefits or the features a little bit. It's just a little too verbose for me. But the thing that I was very confused by that they did were these bomb.com images. They is There's just like so much going on in them. I had no idea what was really happening they had a whole section of these and it was just like where is my eye supposed to go what is this product maybe this is for retargeting or retention audiences only i don't know but when i saw it i was like what is going on here <laughs> they also did a before and after style ad creative that is probably performing well again this is another iteration so if you're looking for winning types of ad creative hint hint that before and after really should try it but yeah the bomb.com ones I was very confused by next up is function of beauty now when i was looking at function of beauty's ad library the number one criticism i had of them is they just have like way too much going on in all of their ads they really do need to condense a lot of it down now I saw this testimonial ad and to be honest, it feels like way too much and I think it could have actually been improved by using some more native format or some native text overlay for instance. This is just too much words and they're also not very exciting words. Same thing for this point out one. It's it, There's not enough empty space for the ad to breathe. <laughs> And then the us versus them. I actually, when I was looking at this first, I didn't actually see the thumbs up or thumbs down. I think that they really needed to make those positives and negatives a little bit more obvious. If you're someone who works at Function of Beauty, please let me know if these are winning ads because I'd love to be proven wrong on these. Next up is Flow. Now, Flow is one of my other favorite brands to look at for performance creative. They happen to work with one of the best creative agencies around and you know they're always putting out and testing top-notch stuff. So I was very interested interested to see these cat memes and references to gummies because when I first saw this, this is like a classic example of me completely misunderstanding what the product is. If I would have saw that as a user, I'd be like, it's gummies for cats, right? But I don't know, maybe they did a ton of customer research and they realized, oh, hey, actually tons of our customer base has cats and they'll get it. At which point, then I'm the asshole. Another creative that I saw that like really irked me was this pink one right here that just has, again, so much going on. Like, I feel like their designer is just trying to cram as much context and as much text and as much emojis into one single small place as possible because like when i see that i'm just like wow it blows my mind so again if you're someone from flow or someone from curiology where you have tons of these really verbose emoji text overlay things and they're actually working please let me know because when i first see that i'm like no it can't be working there's too much going on you're making the user work too much and they're not interested i'm not interested next up is magic spoon so magic spoon is another one of my favorite brands to look at so i was very surprised when i saw this party trick ad and i was like i don't actually know what is being sold here so i understand that it's cereal but what does party trick mix mean is it a mixture of all of those cereals what is the you know is the bowl being sold is that the party mix i think i was just really misunderstanding what the party mix was and why that text overlay was there 
Now, Magic Spoon is a brand that does UGC exceptionally well. They have this Features Point Out ad that is very, very good. And they also do really, really great graphics that highlight the certain benefits and features. I really like this one that shows zero grams of sugar and 14 grams of protein. But like the party mix one, I was really confused by. So this is a really good example of like taking a step back and if someone's not familiar with your brand or even if they are a little bit familiar but they're just not familiar with that product or that idea, like are they gonna understand? Maybe not, you might be confusing them. Next up is Otherland. Now I really wanted to show this example because they have two different examples of a press hit and I think the execution on the Cosmopolitan one was really, really solid. But I thought the E! News one was a little like, nah, wasn't really loving it. Now the reason why I think that is is because it really does look like they just took a screenshot of the E! News one. You can see the little hamburger menu and they also have the byline. They have some little subtitle text. I really think that the press screenshots that do the best are the ones that are a little doctored and the ones that are really taking out the things that aren't as necessary but still look like they are the press feature. Now, <laughs> I'd be fascinated to learn if the E! News one is actually working. I assume the Cosmopolitan one is working because they've been running that for months and months and months and months. Next up is Madrid. Now, I was really irked by this particular ad because it was just so hard to even see the earrings. Like, I, I just think this is a classic example of like a brand being too brandy, but they were really able to redeem themselves with this capsule eardrobe one that is right next door. Now, what I like about this is this is an element of, you know, you know, it has some really great messaging that I think is going to attract the right people, this idea of a capsule wardrobe or a capsule eardrobe. Um, but it also points out the different types of earrings on this girl's ear, so like a features point out ad. I think this is a really great compromise of being brand forward, but also using performance creative tactics to actually get people to convert. The final one that I'm going to review is this one by Burrow. So this is actually the ad that started it all. When I had saw this, I was like, ugh, it makes my eyes hurt. The text is too small, it doesn't stand out. The features are boring. They're not even really benefits. There's way too much of them. There's so much going on. I, this ad is just, it is the pinnacle of a brand seeing a features point out, trying it themselves and just trying way too much. So this is actually the one that I did a TikTok about. When I was looking at this, I was like, ugh, like when in contrast, looking at the Moxie Lash one, like the Moxie Lash is like this done in the right way. You know, you can actually see the, the features point out in a way that's way more clear and they also really do highlight the benefits. Like, hey, a three minute dry time. You know, that's something that the, these people are gonna care about. Smudge and waterproof, also something that like their users are gonna care about. But when lo looking at the burrow one, it's like deeper seats, more seat depth. Like you just said the same thing twice actually. <laughs> Premium Chanel fabric, like no one cares about what that is. Durable, sturdy legs, I hope so. It's, it's a fucking couch. Countless configurations. Now that would actually be really cool to see, but just seeing the specific ad in, a, in an image format is like, so. Um, if you guys are interested in reviewing more bad ads with me, be sure to let me know. I thought I'd give this one a try. It's sort of a new format. Um, otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Later, bye.